Hey guys, it's good to be back here on this Monday. Welcome to Yoga Basics. Uh, we've got a really great class laid out for us today. We will be focusing on mainly shoulders, hips, and spinal stretching. So I think that those are all areas that um, everybody could use a little extra care to. Um, when it comes to the hips and the shoulders, uh, sometimes some of us tend to have like some imbalances. I know I do. I tend to have a little more tightness and weakness on the right side of my body. So uh, keeping that in mind as we move forward today, just keeping a little extra care to, uh, in a healthy way, kind of compensate or make those adjustments if we do have any imbalances in either of those sides. It's okay if each posture on each side does not look exactly the same. So as usual, everything will be very beginner friendly. I'll be offering lots of different variations and modifications along the way. Um, if you have been practicing for a while, I'll try to offer things. Um, I like to offer things in like both directions. So ways that we can taper the pose or the movement down or ways that we can take it to the next extension. So that way we can accommodate all different levels. So I will allow for about one more minute until we get started. It feels really nice outside. I thought that it was gonna be a lot more, uh, a lot hotter today, but um, it's actually feeling pretty good. So I was really happy about that. We didn't get that rain that uh, I was anticipating we were gonna get. So it seems like as usual, the rain keeps getting pushed back. So um, I hope everybody had a great weekend. I think yoga is a great way to ease back into our week, especially coming off of a, a holiday weekend if you did do any celebrating. So um, with that being said, just a reminder that you will need to consult with a physician if you're joining us for the first time or anytime you're starting a new workout program, if you have any uh, unique health conditions, health concerns, it never helps or never hurts rather to uh, take that consultation. All right, so let's go ahead and begin to meet on our mat. Um, as far as prop wise, I don't have anything like fancy today. I've just got my two blocks, my mat, and uh, that's about it. And we're just gonna start in a nice, easy seat here. Hey Kim, yes, I totally agree. Happy Monday, Amy. It is uh, a little bit humid, but it's not too bad, yeah. Sorry, I have got this like little support thing, so I can't always read everybody's messages. It's covered up by that. Yep, not too hot. I totally agree. I'm very pleasantly surprised today with the weather. So let's go ahead and uh, begin on our easy seat over on our mat. I'm just gonna go ahead and face towards you if you wanna kind of face sort of that long ways down your mat straight ahead. As we come around to our seat, I always like to make our yoga basics, you know, a little more educational along the way. So if you're using blocks, blankets, or support, remember that you can always support those hips a little extra by placing those blocks to the outside of the inner thighs. You can always sit on a block or blocks here to lift your seat up a little bit more to allow for a little bit more comfort to your low back or to your hips here. So these are things that you can feel free to kind of experiment with, try them out. You might be surprised that they just make your seated position just a little bit more comfortable. So let's go ahead and just get nice and rooted through our seat. We're just gonna lift through the crown of the head. Let those shoulders fall away from the ears. Just settle into your seat, close those eyes and just begin to breathe. So for some of us, that phrase might sound kind of silly, just begin to breathe because we're, you know, breathing throughout our day, but a lot of the times we're not aware of it. We don't really acknowledge it. So whenever we cue that in yoga, it's an active breath, which automatically allows us to start to breathe a little more deeply, to start to get a little more oxygen throughout our body. As you come into this centering, these first couple minutes of class here to settle in, noticing if there's any areas in the body that just seem to need a little extra healing.
feeling maybe just a little extra care today and I just want you to imagine with your mind that you could send more breath into those areas. The idea is to start to transition to that diaphragm breathing. So if we're feeling our chest rise and fall or press forward and draw back, we want to redirect the source of that breath into our belly by thinking of expanding as we breathe in. Thinking of drawing the navel towards the spine as we breathe out. Just easing into this unique rhythm with those natural little pauses at the top of the breath, at the bottom of the breath. A helpful tool can be to create a theme or to choose an image or a word to kind of link with your practice. So we're gonna go for three more full rounds of breath here. Going for two more. Thinking of sealing in that rhythm or that word. And we'll just go ahead and open our eyes, just finding that soft gaze ahead. Taking an inhale, we're gonna shrug those shoulders up into the ears. Exhale, go ahead and squeeze them down the back and see if we can go for two more. So just inhale, shrug. Exhale, let go of tension. One more in this direction. So just starting by just easing into things, getting things loosened up. We're gonna shrug and then exhale opposite way. Roll those shoulders forward. We'll go for two more. Last one. All right, starting to open up through the side body. Spread those fingertips nice and wide. We're just gonna inhale. Bring those arms up and out. Touch the palms over the head. Lengthen through the side bodies here. You can even let shoulders come up into the ears. We're just gonna exhale. Bring those hands back down to the heart. Breathing out. And kind of keeping with that theme of three, let's do that two more times. Inhale, up and out. Stretch, exhale, lower down, hands to heart. For one more. Exhale, bringing things down. And as we start to ease into the spine, loosening up through there, we'll inhale the hands over to that right knee. So let's kickstand that right arm behind the back. Inhale, lengthening through the crown of the head. Exhale, just find that gentle twist. Think of coming into two more breaths. Those inhales are nice and soft. Those exhales are nice and full. Thinking of gently opening up some space throughout the torso, throughout the spine. Let's go ahead and unwind and bring it around to the center as we inhale over to the left. So left arm is the kickstand. We lengthen through the crown of that head. Nice tall spine. Exhale, starting to open our torso over to the left. And just keeping a little bit of extra care to just be really kind to that left knee. Sometimes we um, have a tendency to kind of like want to do this like death grip on it. And that's just not necessary. We can just do that light touch or maybe even just bump that palm just above the thigh.
and release. Exhale, bring it up. We're gonna take another round up and over. Let's just roll out that shoulder joint. Kind of circle out through that arm. Stretching that tissue back open, surrounding the scapula, those bony points on the shoulder blades. So create one more full circle. We're going to pause with the arm by the ear, and then using an exhale to lift your body up, we're going to float up and over. Back to the right here as we circle that arm. Welcome to move about your own rhythm. You can think of letting the breath set the pace for you. You don't have to match my rhythm or my pace of the breath. Let this be your last full circle and then pausing with the arm by the ear as we exhale. Lift that body back up. All right, beautiful. Let's go ahead and switch gears and come around to our table pose. So remembering that's hands and knees. We want to get everything nice and stacked. So ideally, we want to spread those fingertips wide. We're all going to stack shoulders over wrists. If we have wrist issues, another option is to do some fists here to take pressure off that joint. So once we've got everything stacked, the spine is nice and flat, the core is engaged here. We're going to come into our cat-cow and get the spine a little more loosened up. So taking an inhale, just lift your eyes forward. Think of opening the heart. Letting the tailbone draw up just very subtly. And as we exhale, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin. We're going to round the back, open up space between those shoulder blades, open up some length between each vertebrae. We can even add a little bit of shifting forward and back. And let's just start to move a little more fluidly with those inhales and exhales. Just inhaling, lifting the eyes, open the chest. Exhale, rounding, lengthening the vertebrae. Again, move about your own rhythm. Part of the yoga practice over time is making those little micro movements and your own variations to allow for the practice to fit you. So if you're more tight in the heart and chest, you might hold cow pose a little longer. You need a little more length in your spine, you might hold the cat pose a little longer. So let's go ahead and return back to our neutral position, flat back here. We're going to get started in our first round of thread the needle here. So just a little bit of fluid movement, a little bit of dynamic stretching and work to open that up. We're going to inhale, float the right arm out, exhale, lower. Strong right arm when you put it down, and then we inhale, open the left arm up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, open the right up again. This time, let's move into our thread the needle. So thread that right arm underneath the left. Be sure that you fill in any space that's left over with a block, blanket, or pillow here. If we don't need to, we'll just lower on down to the mat. Use that left arm for support. So allow for some of that decompression if you've got that range of motion on top of that shoulder cap here or another option if we're using some elevation here is to even bring that block underneath the shoulder blade. It can take a little bit of trial and error as you can see to set your props up to match your range of motion and fill in that space but it feels really nice to kind of press those shoulders like a little massage almost here. All right, let's take an exhale, ground into the left palm, returning back to our table pose here. So ground that right arm down nice and strong. Inhale, left arm's gonna float open, just healthy range of motion, nothing too much. Exhale, thread. So as you can see on this side, just using an example if we're elevated still, placing those blocks, blankets, or props in a position that supports you and allows you to get all the same benefits as if we were all the way lower down. Breathing, supporting ourselves, the hips, thighs, and that right arm for stability. Let's 
use your exhale to lift our weight back up, back to the table pose here. So getting each leg a little bit more lengthened out again, let's take an inhale and just stretch the right leg long behind us. Just point those toes down, engage your core, arms are strong. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift the left leg long. So we're just lengthening that hip flexor back out when we point our toes down. That just helps to make sure our hips are square and in the proper alignment. Exhale, lower. We're gonna uh, continue with that hip theme and ease into some low lunging. So taking that right leg up between the arms, I always just like to, like to and prefer to use blocks for support and low lunging, but you don't have to. You can always do fingertips or palms down on the floor. We're just gonna lunge through that right knee. Feel a little more length, space along down that top of the thigh. So be easy with yourself on this first lunge. There's no need to push to that full range of motion. Think maybe like 50% because we will be coming into a couple more rounds of lunging. So just letting the body open up on this first round. Just let your focus be the breath a little bit more. So let's go for two more breaths. On a side note, I'm loving all these uh, bird sounds out here. All right, easing up and out of the hip here. We're gonna keep with the right side for a couple rounds and then we will make sure to even things out and go over to the left. So draw your hands down, bring that right knee back. We're gonna revisit lifting that right leg just like we did before our lunge. So inhale, stretch it long, point the toes down. On an exhale, we're gonna cross the right leg over the left. So two options with that back foot. You can keep the toe tucked, or if you prefer to stretch the top of the foot, you can untuck and just let that foot roll as long as you feel stable. So no matter which one you choose, it's just a matter of preference, we're all going to squeeze our inner thighs together a little bit tighter here. And once you engage that, you'll feel a nice little stretch down along your outer right thigh, particularly, particularly the IT band if you're familiar with that part of the body, which often gets really tight in people who are um, active or really just anybody depending on what we've got going on. So squeeze here. If you've got any more range of motion, it might feel nice to add just a really subtle tilt of that left ear, just a little bit around to the left. It kind of just accentuates that squeeze. So just optional. Breathe. You're gonna feel a little more space opening up along down the right side. And let's unwind. Exhale, crown of the head to the front of the mat. We uncross. Bring your right knee down, and then we're going to bring the right foot back up between the arms for another lunge variation. So lunging through that right knee, add support if you need to. Make sure that support is nice and stable, that you've got shoulder over wrist. We don't want to be like up here or out here. We want to feel secure. So breathe in here. So we're going to add a little bit of a tweak on this one by creating a twist. So take your left hand, if you're using any elevation or support, drop your support down one level, or if you're just on the floor, just lean into that arm a little more. We're just gonna lift that right arm up for a twist. Opening through the heart, we're breathing. Final option is to take that right palm, flip it to the space behind you and bend at the elbow to stretch that shoulder open a little more. Very nice. Go ahead and unwind so you unwrap that arm. Float that right arm down here. From here, we're going to transition into a lizard lunge. So shifting gears back to the hips. This one's going to hit more of the outer hip, kind of that piriformis area, the same area we would stretch if we were doing a pigeon pose, but it's not nearly as extreme as pigeon. I think we did this last week in Relax and Restore. So revisiting, taking that right foot, heel toe stepping, one step out to the right edge of the mat. Those toes should still be slightly turned out. We definitely want to make sure they're not turned in because that will tweak on the knee here. So bring your arms to the inside of the leg here. And if you've got sensitive knees, do make sure you kind of add a little cushion underneath this back knee. So I'm just gonna stay in my high lizard lunge. If 
it's okay to let that right knee point out to the side if that's what it wants to do. Just make sure the toes and hips are pointing the same way. Another option is to create a little shelf here with those elbows if we want to lower down. So just take about two more breaths. And let's start to switch. So step by step, heel toe step, the right foot back in to the middle of the mat. Frame that leg with the arms. Lift up at, up and out of the hip. Draw your right knee back. And then we're going to go ahead and prepare to switch things out. So now we're going to even out on the left side. It's going to feel really nice once we're done with uh, both sides, getting things back even and into balance. So remember, ease into the first round. Think 50% and let your focus be on the breath. So find your lunge, lift your eyes forward. You can keep the body still a little more draped over that leg. open up in its own time. Part of the reason we stay a little more draped is that we don't want to tweak the back unless we're ready for that, unless we're ready to lift up. If we feel a sharpness in the low back, it just means that our hips are still kind of tight. It's all connected. So we want to let our body kind of take the lead on our range of motion here. Whew, kind of buggy out here today, the drawbacks of practicing outside. So let's go ahead and start to ease out of this first round. Bring your arms down, safely and gently bring that left knee back. So remembering we inhale, lift that left leg again, toes pointing down to keep our hips square. Cross the left leg over the right, either keep that back toe tucked or roll the top of the foot. So squeeze those inner thighs nice and tight, little tilt with that right ear over to the right. Breathe it out here, strong arms to stay supported. Unwind, crown of the head around to the front, uncross, draw the left knee back down. Let's revisit our low lunge. So bring that left foot up. You can always use the hand to help it. Find any support you need to. So just set yourself up in that neutral low lunge, kind of our nice baseline here as we prepare for our twist. So looking at the right hand and arm, you've got a block, pop that block down one level, no matter where you're at. If you're using the floor, just lean into that arm. So you inhale. Spin the heart open to the left. Should feel nice for the spine and shoulder. Take care to that left shoulder. If the arm is down here, that's fine. Don't tweak and force anything. If you need a little more, take that left palm, flip it to the space behind you. Bend that elbow. Stretching out some tissues around those shoulder blades. And nice and easy, unwrap. Bring things down, we're moving into lizards. So keep with your left side. Heel toe step left foot, one step out to the left, arms to the inside of the leg. So I'm just going to stay in my high lizard, and by high lizard I just mean my arms and elbows are just staying straight and fully lengthened. If you want to create your shelf if you've got blocks, you can stack them as high as you like. And lower on down to those forearms here. Just breathe it out, breathe into any tightness or tension in your hip points. for one more full breath in our lizard. All right, step by step, ease up and out of that right hip, heel toe step the left foot back to the middle. We're framing the leg and then drawing left knee back here. So go ahead and just sit back, child's pose. Let's take a little rest here and kind of regroup. We're about halfway through our material here. So just do a little check-in. Maybe get back in touch with the rhythm of your breath, with your intention, with your image. And before we get moving again here in 
into kind of our next phase. While we're in our child's pose, let's do a little bit of shoulder stretching by just walking those fingertips towards the top of the mat. Just come up on those fingertips, cup the arms. Feel that just gentle pull around those shoulder joints, that rotator cuff area. And melt those palms flat. We're gonna inhale, step over to the right off the mat. Little side bend, just briefly here. And switch, inhale back onto the mat. Exhale, over to the left. Nice work. Let's keep going here. Stepping back onto the mat. We're going to go ahead and lift up. Bring yourself down onto the belly in any way. You could lower down to the forearms and shimmy your way back. You could even flatten the spine and do a little modified chaturanga and lower down. We're going to come into that sphinx pose really briefly here. So make sure your back body is nice and soft. You can always spread those feet a little bit wider than the hips. Palms down. Come up onto those forearms. No need to engage through the glutes on down to the lower body. Let that be soft. It's active through the upper body. Think of firing down through arms, shoulders, and chest. Making sure we create a lot of space between shoulders and ears. That helps to remind us to press down and be active. Melt into the floor. Let's exhale. Melt our way down. Stack those palms. So counter movement. Bend the knees. Windshield wiper it out. So as we counter stretch here, just so you know what to expect, we're going to move into our first downward dog of the practice. We're going to do a little bit of movement with breath between downward dog and modified upward dog. If you're not ready for downward dog, I'm just going to suggest that you do modified upward facing dog to child's pose instead. So let those legs go long, chin to the mat, bend an elbow on either side. If you're taking child's pose, let the tops of those feet stay nice and flat. You'll just press back up, heels, uh, hips back to the heels for that rounded low back. If we're coming into down dog, you can go ahead and tuck those toes. Press your way up, moving through the knees and table pose, and then just lifting those hips up. Feet are hip width apart, arms and shoulders are plugged in. We're aiming for that flat back by bending the knees as much as we need to. So lift those hips up and get that 45 degree angle through the spine. We're gonna pedal out here on this first round, bending and straightening through opposing knees. And eventually just letting those heels go soft. So again, if we can't achieve the flat back with straight legs, we're gonna bend those knees and lift up. So let's drop down, untuck the toes, modified upward facing. So if you're in child's pose, you'll go ahead and lift up at this time. Keeping the knees on the floor, find that gentle back bend. You can lift that spine up as much as you need to to stay safe. So on the exhale, either downward dog or child's pose. You're just gonna move in your own rhythm and you can even mix it up. Maybe you alternate and take downward dog on one round and then child's pose on another. Depending on how you feel today, if you're feeling a little more restorative, you could always just rest in child's pose right now. That's totally fine. So this will be our last modified upward facing. Move back into that downward dog. And bending the knees a lot, or if you're in child's pose, you're just gonna meet us in standing forward bend in any way that's comfortable for a transition for you. So I'm just inching my feet little by little towards the top of my mat, standing forward bend. Feet are flat and parallel, hip width apart. So blocks are your friend here, use them for support. Bend those knees as much as you need to for comfort to your lower back and backs of the legs. We can shift, think of shifting our weight into our toes. Shake the head, yes and no. Unclench the jaw. So feel nice and rooted through those three corners of your feet. We're gonna take an inhale and come into our flat back halfway lift. So palms to the shins, lengthen the crown of the head, past your mat, keep the shoulders back. Think number seven with the body. Exhale, fold, reaching down. We're gonna find that one more time. Inhale, flat back. 
exhale fold keep that nice soft bend in the knees here we're just gonna rise up to standing so just a little mountain pose lift those eyes forward spin the palms to the front of the mat so shoulder blades are drawn down the back keep a little soft bend in those knees and breathe so again a little check-in are you staying connected with your breath staying present in your body as we prepare to do a couple half salutations here we're going to find an inhale and just lift those arms up and out touching those palms overhead just lengthen up through those fingertips feel some length down the sides maybe add just a subtle tilt back or you can stretch straight up exhale swan dive so open those arms flat back forward bend if you're exhaling on the way down take your time here be gentle we're going to prepare to come back up so inhale palms to shins take the halfway lift first Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, reverse swan dive. So really engage through your core and backs of the legs. Same way we come up as we went down, gather things overhead, palms touch, exhale, hands to the heart. Take a couple breaths here. Let those shoulder blades come down the back. Shoulders are reaching away from the ears. All right, so preparing to come into just a couple uh, bigger standing poses. And then from there, we'll kind of slowly taper things back down, moving towards that final relaxation. So inhale, arms down, out and up, touch those palms overhead. Just like before, lengthen, either stretch up or baby back bend. Exhale, swan dive. Floating our way back down towards the feet. Breathe. We're taking our halfway lift, flat back. Exhaling fold. So we've done quite a bit of low lunging up into this point. We're going to make that shift to high lunging at this time. So again, blocks are your friend. If you have them handy, bend those knees a lot. We're going to inhale. Step the right foot way back. High lunge. So take care to that front knee. You want to make sure it's stacked over the ankle here. Have a sturdy base of support. We don't want arms up here, out here. It's wrists underneath the shoulders for safety. So it's a lot to think about. Just uh, give yourself some slack, you know, if you're new, knowing that you'll get it down the more that you work on it. So if you're kind of in a good place with that low lunge and feel that you can focus on another cue, maybe think of lifting those eyes a little bit more forward. We have a tendency to kind of want to hang this head down, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but if we can, a little lift. All right, exhale. Either step or inch that back foot back up. Inhale, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, release. You're reaching down, nice soft bend in those knees. We're gonna go for the other side. So inhale, left foot steps way back. We're nice and stacked through that front knee. So think shin perpendicular to your mat here. That's a good rule of thumb. We're up on those back toes, the hips are square. Maybe we're lifting those eyes forward a bit. If you've got a lot of hair like me, you might be looking at your ponytail. All right, exhale, either stepping or inching it up. So by inching it up, this is what I mean. It looks like this. I just do these little inches to give myself time to get up and making sure that I don't lose my balance. So inhaling, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Strong legs as we lift up. Let's kiss those hands overhead. Exhale, palms to the heart. Take three full breaths. For two more. So as we build to kind of our pinnacle pose of the practice, we're gonna come into something called skier's pose. It is actually the preparation for Warrior One. We're not gonna rise up into Warrior One today. We're gonna continue to kind of work on building our strength, but um, this is a really great pose to practice. There's gonna be a couple different levels here depending on where we're at. If you've been practicing for a while and wanna just rise on up to Warrior One, you're more than welcome to do that. So inhale, arms out, down and up. Palms feet, we stretch, lift up. Exhale, bring it out and open, forward bend. Inhale, flat back. So long spine, number seven. Exhale, fold. All right, so let's find our blocks handy. 
So we're going to start in the high lunge. So inhale, right foot steps way back. So we begin in that high lunge here. So paying attention to your back foot, we're going to ground that back heel down flat. So if you have any hip issues or concerns, please move gently here. If you, you know, just hearing that cue that that might not work for you, just stick with the high lunge and skip it. So ground the foot down flat. The goal is to point those toes out at 45 degrees. So it's different than a warrior two because we always do kind of that foot more uh, parallel to the outer edge of our mat. This one's got a little bit more of an angle. It's for stability because we want to think of our hips square to the front of the mat, like two headlights facing forward still. So to make this a little more comfortable, take that front foot, move it over one heel toe step. We want to make sure the outer edge of this foot, the pinky toe side is parallel to the edge of the mat. So this is, um, if we were rising up into warrior one, like this is what the bottom half of our body would look like. So this might be where you stay today. If it's uncomfortable for your hips, just come back into high lunge or find something else that works. If we want to take it one step further, we're going to come into skier. And it's okay to lean on that front leg if you're building up the strength. Your arms go back like a skier. The final option is to do a little hover, which is going to be stronger for the legs. Again, if we've been practicing for a while, we might rise up on into warrior one. I'm not going to demo that because if you've done it before, you'll know what that looks like. And when you're ready, go ahead and bring things down. Very nice. So just heel toe step, that left foot back in a little more, spin back on carefully to that back toe, back to high lunge. Exhale, interstep it up, forward bend. So we're halfway through and then it's all downhill from there. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Let's go ahead and stay down. Inhale, step your left foot back. Set up in the high lunge first. So remember, step by step, and actually on this side, I'm going to uh, cue things in a different order here that might be more comfortable for the hips. So take the right foot, move it over one heel toe step, make sure that pinky toe side's parallel to the edge of your mat. From there, back foot grounds down flat, so you'll be able to see my foot better on this side. So as you can see, toes are pointed in at 45 degrees. So that. That's what I mean versus like flat and parallel like this. Like this would be preparing for warrior two, not warrior one. You want to 45 degrees. If you've got uh, feet issues that might be a little uncomfortable. So just listen to your body. Hips are square to the front like headlights. You're either continuing to use your support. Second option, lean on the leg. Let the arms back. Really hug those leg muscles into the bones. Final two options, you're either doing a little hover or rising up warrior one. Breathe. Try to keep your neck in line with your spine. We don't want to hang things down heavy. Look just past your mat. And bring it down nice and slow. Move that right foot back in. Gently spin onto that back toe. High lunge. Very nice. Beautiful work. Give yourself kind of just like a mental pat on the back right now. Come down nice and easy, lowering back down through left knee, bring those arms down, let's just go ahead and draw right leg back, nice and easy, like I said, it's all downhill from here, come around to your seat, legs nice and long, we are going to just keep arms down by either side, just kind of catch your breath here, give your body that permission to start to kind of bring things down, we're cooling down, so just inhale, lengthen, Exhale, let's just stretch out our hamstrings. Just walk, walk those fingertips forward. Relax a little more through head and neck. Breathe. At this point in the practice, we can start to let our breath just become a little more natural again. Add any gentle side to side movement here that might feel good. And nice and easy, just start to walk your hands back in, unravel your spine. Eventually, eyes are going to lift forward. We're going to bring the soles of the feet together for our bound angle pose here. Use those blocks for support under the hips if you need to. You can do hands to the shins or to the ankles. Just inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, add a little bit of a stretch if you want to by just leaning forward, just nice and gentle. We can always add a little bit of dynamic movement and sweep from side to side, or maybe we just settle in and let the heart kind of draw forward. 
So find your variation for about one more breath. And gently start to lift your heart back up. Just place the hand on the outside of each thigh and knee. Just lift it back up. Lengthen those legs. Just give it a nice little shake here. And we're going to go ahead and start to make our way down to the spine. Just working more and more towards our relaxation. So just spin your way. Facing to the front of the mat. Adjust your seat and then just in any way. Let's go ahead and just tuck and roll our way back. We're going to stretch each leg nice and long. Just inhale, bring those arms and biceps up by the ears. So just feeling your breath here. One more inhale, stretch it back out. Exhale, one knee at a time. We're gonna bring the knees in towards the heart. So it's like an upside down child's pose. Just wrap around, nice gentle hug and squeeze. Take a little bit of rocking from right to left as long as it's not too much pressure on your low back. Bring it back to the middle, palms on the kneecaps. Let's circle a couple times to the right. Other side, we're going to circle a couple times to the left. Bring it back to the middle. Keep your right knee in. Let your left leg go long. If this feels like too much of a pull on the hips, you'll just keep that left knee bent, foot flat. nice and easy draw it in exhale other side right leg either shoots long or you bend through that right knee foot goes flat and let's go ahead and draw that knee back in Let's just do a little legs at the wall without the wall. Just allow for some recirculation or at this time, I'll just invite you to find any other inversion of your choice that you might have in your practice. That could be anything from a supported bridge pose to a full bridge pose, maybe um, shoulder stands if that's what you've been working with for a while, anything at all here. If you are taking the long leg variation like me, just make sure when you come out, you just bend one knee at a time just to keep things nice and safe. We're going to go ahead and settle into our final pose of the practice. Whether you go into that tradition, traditional Shavasana or any other posture that promotes relaxation for you, start to just settle in. Let your back body, vertebrae, arms, legs on down to the feet just melt into the mat. Allow the skin across the face to just soften, soften through the forehead and eyes, temples and brows, no clenching to the jaw. We just give ourselves the gift of these next two minutes or so to just settle in and hit restart this afternoon.
just very gently starting to feel a deeper breath. Coming back into your diaphragm as you feel a little more expansion through your navel. Deepening through the exhale as we just melt the navel back down towards the spine a little bit deeper. We're going to bring things full circle and start to come back to that rhythm of the breath. If you don't have any more obligations for the day and just want to relax for longer, by all means, just continue to settle in. For those of us that are going back out into the day, let's wiggle through toes and fingertips as we start to roll out through wrists and ankles. We're just going to gently work our way back up towards the seat, maybe drawing knees back into the body. We can take that fetal position back up to our seat or we can roll our way back up. Just be gentle and easy with yourself. So start all the way back to that easy seat that we started in here. We're going to just take a brief pause to just close our eyes. To sit up tall, acknowledging any changes in any aspect of our bodies. That could be physical, mental, it could just simply be your breath. Maybe you just breathe a little easier. Open our eyes, find a soft gaze ahead. Just bring your hands to your heart. So I just thank each one of you for just popping on here with me today. As always, this will be posted available for later viewing. It'll be uploaded to our YouTube channel here later today. So I just hope everybody feels refreshed to go back out into their day and just take things on. As always, peace be with you and I'll see you next time.